Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope y'all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know it's been a little while since our last video, so just to recap very quickly, we did install the engine into the back of the Octane in the last video. If you missed out on that, definitely go give it a watch. I think it was one of our better videos and a lot happened that we're gonna be building off of in today's video. So as for today's video, we're going to work on connecting that power from the motor to the rear wheels via our drivetrain. We'll start off here with our differential. As you can see, we've already installed the rear sprocket, which is connected to the motor by the chain. You'll actually get to see that connection here in a few minutes. But before we get there, we're gonna go ahead and work on finishing the assembly of this axle housing. And just for fun, I'll go ahead and install the long axle just to show y'all how it, how it sits. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit too long. We're actually gonna have to cut that down here in just a moment. Now back to that long axle, I already cut off one piece of it here. Go ahead and cut off the second. And what this will do is effectively shorten the axle by about five and a half inches. We have a sleeve that we'll press both ends into before then having Tillman weld everything up for us as always. With that axle back in one piece, we can put it with the rest of the differential assembly and get that put into the back of the car. And once we were happy with how everything lined up, we were good to start putting full beads on both of those attachment points. Now the second half of this video is going to be dedicated towards welding the engine tabs in as well. In the last video, we sort of just assembled and set everything into the back of the car to make sure fit-wise everything checked out, uh, but we weren't able to actually do any welding until we had the differential situated. We've got to align the two sprockets between the differential and the engine. So now that the differential is fixed in place, we can go ahead and make sure the engine lines up with that. We had this handy laser level that sort of made it a little bit easier. And once everything looked good, the welding could begin.
while we get the engine a little bit out of the way, one of the other things we're also going to throw in here is this other piece of tubing with a hole through it, and that's going to serve as the sort of mount for our jacker bolt, is what I'll call it. We won't see the bolt or swivel foot for a little while still, but the point of this is to take all of the slack out of our chain to properly tension it by sliding the mower either forwards or backwards. So once we got that done, we dropped the motor back in, bolted it back into its mounts. And the final thing that we're actually gonna weld today is our third attachment point for that differential housing. Going into the day, we weren't 100% sure what we were going to be doing for the third mount. Sometimes you have to actually kind of put everything together before you can then really see how everything's going to situate. So we threw this bracket together, last minute match drilled some holes into a plate that was already mounted onto the housing. I'd say it worked out pretty well. At least it's good enough for what it needs to be. And with that, we're pretty much done for the day. Uh, in order to actually complete the drivetrain, there's a couple more things we have to install, mainly the chain itself and our CV axles. You can actually see in this video here where I have one of the CV axles kind of jammed in place on the left side that I'll have to fix here uh, actually in the next video. Uh, but we're gonna call it here for today, save a little bit of content for next time. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.